Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the owner of the very beautiful Gandona Estate Winery in Napa Valley on Pritchard Hill. He is Manuel Pires, and today we are going Beyond Fine Wines. Hey, Manny, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Thank you, Rusty. It's, it's a pleasure to be here to tell my story, you know, across three continents. Yeah, Manny, you are such an incredible person. You've had so much success in your life, but can you first tell me a bit about your background? Well, I, I was born and raised in Portugal in the Douro region, and it is actually, it's called Trajos Montes. It's behind the mountains. So it's, that kind of goes well with the show today. Um, I was 15 when we came to the United States, uh, to specific Connecticut, and I uh, attended the school in, in Connecticut and um, started my young career uh, spending a, a, a summertime, you know, and uh, working for a watch company. And that put me on, uh, on the right path of uh, electronic timers. Very after that, um, I started the company in 1977, uh, manufacturing and repair electronic timers. Uh, then uh, right after that, 83, we uh, acquired Morse Watchmans, which is the leading technology of uh, time devices that watch, you know, night watchman systems, key, smart keys, and we took it national. And, and not only that, but it also international. Manny, I, I'm impressed that you were the president of Morse Watchmans because, like you said, you're, you, you were the global leader, global technology leader in management security systems. I mean, this is worldwide. Now, I want to ask you, what did you focus on with your company that made you successful? Focus was technology. At the time, um, in the early 80s, things were just moving so fast. But the way the technology was being, um, the systems were all mechanical devices. Everybody was in the age to, the, you know, to change it um, to some uh, method of uh, doing it electronically. And that is when uh, I developed the first night watchman systems in uh, 83. Took it to the market for six months and then took it, you know, into a, a global. And that we were uh, the very first ones on, uh, on that field. And then that literally within six months uh, was overnight success. Man, and the it, it's amazing the patents that you had developed with Morse Watchmans. And, and Manny, I want to ask you about your beautiful Gandona State Winery. I mean, you're in Napa Valley overlooking Lake Hennessy. It's absolutely beautiful. And why did you name your winery after your grandfather? Well, that goes back to, as a young boy, spending the amount, you know, uh, the time in the summertime on, the, on, on this farm, you know, school would not be able to finish fast enough so I could work. You know, not work, but it, spend the time with them in the summers. Uh, and the name is was given to him uh, when he returned from the United States uh, in 1920. And he helped the village a great deal until the, the very last day uh, of his life. And that it means humble, uh, someone, uh, you know, gracious, and, and that, um, that stayed with, with me for until now, uh, even as when I visit the village, uh, um, the village refers to me as the, the grandson of Gondona is coming. So um, that's what the name is. 
So I made a promise I would, uh, to myself, someday I will uh, develop or own a winery and I will name it Gondona. I love that, uh, that he's, uh, that, that the name means humble man. And, and Manny, tell me about why your winery is so special. I mean, you, you, you're, you're at Pritchard Hill and how many acres do you own and how many acres are the actual vineyards? So we're in the north corner of Pritchard Hill, the middle ridge. The Pritchard Hill consists of three ridges. And we're at the middle. The property, it's, uh, it's 114 acres of state. And we have uh, under 20 under vines. Man, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Justin Cruz and I were, had the pleasure of being there at your estate last month. And it was absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the view overlooking Lake Hennessy. I mean, your wines are absolutely incredible. We love all of your wines and, and we love being there with you, Manny. Uh, did, did you like having, did you have fun with us too? Absolutely. You know, I, you know, and, and I did not worry, you know, until Terry calls me up and saying, Rusty is going to come to visit you. So that was a surprise. Now, Manny, I want to ask you, why is your winery successful? I think it's, it's not a, it's one, it's the leadership I have on and then surrounding um, with, with a great team uh, like Philippe and Adam and Castro as well. It, it, it's being focused, you know, being coming um, from outside, uh, non wine experience. Um, the fundamental was acquiring, you know, um, beautiful land, you know, the best land and, uh, you know, consider the best land pr to produce Cabernet Sauvignon and, and, and this and, and Pritchard Hill. Um, I should not um, be any less, the wines they should not reflect no less than our neighbors. And with the right team, and uh, it, it, put, it put me where I needed to be, you know, and continue improving um, what we need to be done to be successful. You're so right about the importance of building the right team around you. And Manny, tell me about how the fires um, had affected you or that area. Well, we've been affected um, by the fires for the last three years, one way or the other. Uh, started at 17, but on the normal conditions and what I have we have experienced, um, fires, they, they come in much later than, than what was the fire in 2020. You know, it's after the harvest, so all the fruit is in. You know, we're, the only biggest concern we have, you know, make sure the fires don't get, you know, they got close enough so, you know, we'll have damage and, and the structure or the vineyards. But um, the, the 20. 20 fires started at, you know, August 14th, and that was, um, we just had finished Verasion, you know, not even close to be picking. And then we stayed surrounded um, for uh, almost six weeks by fire and smoke. People need to know that even if a winery doesn't, you know, get burnt down because of the fires. It's the smoke will ruin the grapes. Is that true? That's it's what, it what happened in 2020. So we made a decision not able to uh, pick any fruit for that reason uh, alone. Um, you know, would, would not totally ruined, but would be uh, showing in the wine after this bottle. So the level of, of, of wine we're producing on Fletcher Hill, that would have been very difficult for us to put it in the, in the bottle. And what type of grapes do you grow at your vineyard? What are, the estate is 100% Cabernet. You know, so we have, you know, it's, uh, that's what the soils and what it, the region is well known for. And right there, you mentioned about the soils. Tell me about the uniqueness of the soil and, and why it turns out to be such great, uh, great soils for your wines. 
we're sitting in the, in the middle of uh, which took place of, uh, some type of landslide, you know, during the, maybe three, four or 5,000 years ago when the soils are just um, lots of volcanic rock, um, you know, reddish. So you, lots of iron, in, you know, and, and as well. So it, 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 it's, it's great because lots of um, rock with, with, with also lots of nutrients decomposed materials and uh, great uh, drainage for the vines and, and the soil exposure, various uh, areas um, it's where the vines uh, enjoy and, and be able to produce the level of uh, fruit we're on. No, I, it's amazing. And I want to ask you about Philippe Melka. Philippe Melka has been named one of the top nine winemakers in the world, and he's your winemaker. What makes him so great? Well, uh, Philippe uh, and I we met um, um, about 2006. He was familiar with the property even back then. And then, um, you know, uh, 2007, I approached Philippe, said, would you consider being the winemaker? So the answer was, uh, he didn't give me an answer right away, but uh, within, a, within a year or so, then he said, yes, I will be. But he was fundamental involved um, with replanting the entire estate as well, even before he was the winemaker. So, and he's been our winemaker since, since 2010. Man, that's, that's amazing. And I want to ask you about Terry Kakazu. I mean, Terry is the owner of Terry's Place and has her wine company here in Hawaii. And she is the one that connected you and I together. And there she is with you and Philippe. Correct. I, you know, uh, that photograph brings memories. You know, I was, I believe it was the very first day. I, I, I remember the conversation I had with Terry. He said, I'm going to be in town. I'd like to visit you. I know what you're producing, you know, and that's how it started, you know, uh, you know, back, I believe it was back 2010. Yeah, she, she's such a great promoter for <laughs> Gandona. I mean, you're in Costa, the Maya. I mean, I love all of your wines and Terry is just so knowledgeable and I'm so appreciative that, that she was able to connect you and I together. And Manny, I want to ask you, what's, what's a, big challenge for you um, in dealing with um, your winery at the moment? I think the challenge is the unknown, what, um, you know, specific in the summer times, the fires, that is, it's the biggest challenge, we, you know, um, there's not a single day goes by, we don't think about it. And it's, it's been on our minds for, for, you know, since 2017. Um, that's that right now that's it's that's what it is even this year um we uh, the challenge was in na the nature uh, of of we we were getting we got on um, five days the temperature reached the 117 for five days straight and this is just before harvest you know and we were forced to pick right after that um, you know, and, and that's the, the challenge we have, the unknown what's coming during that, those 30 day period for harvest. When, when you deal with those high temperatures on certain days, is there a way that you can cover certain parts of your vineyard or what do you do about it? We do have shade cloth. We can protect the fruit and the south side. Um, but it's, it's, we do that as well. That helps, but, um, wasn't this year was just, uh, we never had experienced that a hundred and you know, 120, you know, for that period of time. Um, you know, in the 2015, we experienced two or three days at 110 and, uh, and that does help. Um, but this year was, you know, uh, was beyond that. So Manny, when it gets that hot, how does it affect the grapes? Uh, it really uh, depends how quick and how, uh, if, it's, if they're exposed to the, the sun at the late afternoon, 
uh, literally dehydrates the fruit. So, uh, you know, uh, if, if, if we get that many days and, and uh, without protection, uh, if we, you know, they, they'll, they'll start uh, turning to raisin. What's another challenge you deal with, maybe in terms of, you know, there's some bigger wineries versus, you know, you're more of a limited production winery. W what's a challenge with that? Challenge is if, if be able to find the right partner to support you in the certain markets in, in the United States. Um, because we're so small, we're, um, it's difficult to, to, to find that partner uh, to represent um, the wines on, on, those, on, on those specific markets. Um, you know, uh, it's unless you know, it's done, most of it is done direct, direct to the consumer, but where else we want it to be exposed and, uh, and, um, and into those uh, certain markets. And Manny, how many, how, so how many limited cases do you produce per year, approximately? The total wines from the, it, it's under 2,000 cases, you know, varies, you know, from year to year. But uh, that's, it's, it's very small. Okay. And how would you describe the details of your Cabernet wines? Um, the Cabernets, they're, they're, they represent the site. That is uh, lots of beautiful fruit, uh, very fruit forward, levels of fruit, uh, lots of beautiful minerality, clean, velvety. These are the wines that are, uh, look forward to uh, for long aging. Yeah, I, I agree because for me, I, I can't really taste all of these unique details. I just try the wine. I'm like, oh, this is really great. I mean, I know if it's great wines or, or just okay wines and all of your wines are just superb. And Manny, you, you have my first book, Beyond the Lines. I need to get you my second book, but I want to know how did you like the book and what what stood out to you in it? What it stood out to me in, in, a, di in a different um, sections of the book was um, that one of, it's a team player. So it's not only that, but also at the same time, um, it's the success is gets measured, you know, not in the short term, in the long term. So the vision, anyone, even in any business. Um, you know, you can't be short-sighted. You have to have, be disciplined and be able to execute the, uh, you know, the goals. You know, you they're on different markets, but it, the goals you have in mind. You know, and, and but again, it's a team being a team player. No, I'm I'm glad you brought up that because I mean, we we have teams, whether it be in sports, business. I look at a family as a team and and not just being able to achieve success but to sustain success and that's what you've done with Morse Watchmen's that's what you're doing with Gandona Estates is there like a secret recipe for you achieving this sustained success I, I it it is the team, but it also we have to move with the market to where the market takes you and be sensitive to that as well and be uh, focused on that if it's domestic or international, specific at, at Morse Watchmen's, we were very successful and in, in the European countries due to the fact perhaps was because growing up and spending that amount of time in the summers um, that I was sensitive to that versus the in United States. Um, and, and pick the right partners. I think that it is essential. Um, and they have to be at the same level of focus of the markets and, and develop those markets based on, on you know, once, you know and, and teamwork. And, and Manny, you know, I, we, we've heard of the phrase attention to details. And I'm all about a superior discipline details. And, and that's what you're about too, these, these superior discipline details in terms of why your winery 
stands out as one of the premier wineries in Napa. How how detailed are you when you when you're doing what you do with your vineyards? We are very detail oriented on, but more on the not only on the winemaking, but also on the farming. And I, you know, that's what I know it's all about. It's, uh, you know, producing a great bottle of wine. Uh, you also need, you know, it's, it stars and farming stars in the soils on uh, that. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and Manny, tell me about the caves that you built at your winery. I mean, you have some incredible caves there and, so tell tell me about how you built it and and why is it important to have the caves? Well, the caves is uh, you know you know it, it, it's nothing new. It's uh, they were very difficult just and logistic just to come up to the ridge to the top of the the, the hill. Um, you know, it was a company that you know uh, they've been doing it for a long time, and uh, but it was challenging because it was bedrock on a very uh, unstable rock on it. Um, but uh, we, the caves is, it, it's great for the wine because that's where the, the wine rests for, you know, a, um, for 20 to 30 uh, months on a, on a barrel on, without changing the temperature. It maintains around, you know, 56 to 60, you know, uh, all year round without any influence from outside. And Manny, you have been to Hawaii multiple times. And before the pandemic, you were featured at the Kapalua in Maui, the Kapalua Wine and Food Festival, right? And how was that experience for you? It was a great experience. And uh, we kept uh, supporting that uh, association as well. Uh, and we continued doing it. And uh, you know, and uh, I, we start coming more often visiting uh, Hawaii, you know, uh, specific Maui. So it was uh, not uh, only once, but we would come and visit and stay there, you know, half a dozen times a year. Well, Maui is absolutely beautiful, and and I want you to come to Oahu. <laughs> when will you be coming to Oahu next? Soon, they'll make a, a short trip to the Big Island, you know. <laughs> and Manny, obviously, you know, in my book, I talk about the importance of taking calculated risks. Um, you cannot just be complacent and have success. You need to take calculated risks. What are your thoughts about the importance of taking risk? But you have to evaluate the risk. There's a, a level of risk. And I think that overcomes what you, you know, as well. So the risk is can be there, but at the same time, uh, you have to measure that risk. It is a worth to go through that. Um, and in our case, we don't, um, you know, at Morse Watchmen's, there was always a risk when we introduce uh, a new uh, revision or a new version of the system. Um, the risk is, um, you know, uh, when you're dealing with the, uh, the state of the art electronics, you know, specific and you know, and the software, um, you know, it's very quickly, you know, it's uh, redundant, you know, because the, the technology moves so fast, and so. But there's there's risks. To be, any is risk, and every day we walk out the door, we just have to uh, overcome those. Yeah, and when you when you came up with those patents for Morse Watchmen's. I mean, you, you were always very forward thinking. You're, you're trying to anticipate the next trend, right? Correct. Um, you know, it was not only the patents, but um, the product. The product didn't exist. So we not only created the product, but we developed the market so the product can be actually sold and used. And, and that is uh, that was the biggest risk because we didn't know how the market would accept it. But we so the market um, uh, so the key control didn't exist. All the keys were um, being housed in, in the metal cabinet uh, with, with, with the with, with the paper tag on it with the name all in you know together. And our system allows us to be um, um, very precise. It's all done electronically. And, and and so that alone, the market, we moved the market 
from a you know from a mechanical device to a, a solid state device. And Manny, I mean, obviously you've created a superior culture of excellence at Morse Watchmen's. You did the same with Gandona Estate Winery. What type of leader are you? What kind of, how would you describe your leadership style? I, I wouldn't even know how to answer it, but I, I, I'm looking for excellency on that, whoever the outcome is. Um, you know, it's not a, it's not easy every day, you know, any day, but at the same time, you have to deal with those situations, you know, and overcome, uh, you know, with the, with the, with the team. I mean, no, I'm glad, I'm glad you said excellence. Cause that's, that's all, that's what we're about. We're all about, and, and I always say, Manny, there's, there's a difference between a culture of excellence and a superior culture of excellence. And, and that's what I really like. I, I like helping good teams become great, but I like helping great teams become extraordinary. And you truly have an extraordinary vineyard there. And Manny, I want to really thank you for taking time to share your insights on my show today. You're very welcome. Thank you, Manny. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Manny and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.